have to have this thing. Come on up, Tara. We're live. We're ready. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. church service this morning. It's our youth Sunday today. Amen. And we just want to thank y'all for uh, uh, tuning in. Amen. Amen. Our, uh, on my sheet, I have no uh, no Bible study Tuesday. Amen. We have revival uh, next week, Tuesday through Thursday. Amen. And also, I want to the reason I'm up here, our pastor had to uh, attend another service. He's on his way back in a little bit. And we also have, pastor wants us to help celebrate Sister Ford's birthday, which is on the 19th, during our revival. Amen. You all know what you've been asked to give. Amen. 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 So excited about that. And we also have our church calendar meeting coming up November the 1st. Amen. Amen. And I see on my notes here that no Bible study the 8th of November, because that's voting day. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure we uh, uh, keep our dates handy and uh, aware on everything, what we have to do. Now, can I get you to stand, please? I'm going to be reading. This is what we've been studying in our Bible study, so I thought I'd pull it verses of it. Reading Psalms 23, the first four verses. Amen. If you've been coming to Bible study, you it ought to mean a little more now that we've been going through studies Amen. about Psalm 23. Amen. 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 <laughs> and it reads, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I've read four verses of Psalms 23. May the Lord have a blesser, blessing to the doers and hearers of his holy word. Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, we come again just saying thank you. Lord, we thank you for just being God. Lord, we thank you because you control the whole universe, Lord. You know all there is to know, Lord. Lord, thank you for guiding us thus far. Thank you for allowing this church to be a church that we hope that is a good aroma, Lord, a good sense to your knowledge.
we're going to get ready to move on and, and hear from our choir. And we just want to thank you. Amen, amen. Our dumplings are making it in. Amen, amen. amen. All the youth that is in the choir, come on up. Zoe and Chloe. Uh, Haley and Keith, come on up. Let's get the kids a hand, guys. You know, the Bible is saying a little child should lead them. This is our future. What you're looking at is the church of tomorrow. Amen. And we need to celebrate, give them praise. Let's give our our, our adult youth a hand. Everyone to stand in the gap. I'm excited. I love when the children get up and give God praise. God loves that. Amen. And I would advise all the young folks to start asking God for stuff. Amen. When you work for God, God works for you. Amen. To God be the glory. Look like we got a special guest coming too. Amen. It's an honor to have all of you. To God be the glory. Amen.
need to do the same. Amen. 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 It's giving time. Amen. It's time to give God what is due. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to give. Amen. I want you to know there's somebody out there wish that they could give the Lord something. Amen. Amen. So we need to take time to give God what God would like. Amen. Amen. What it would suggest. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we take for granted. We start thinking that it's us doing everything. Yeah. But we need to make sure we know who's really doing it. Who got you the job? Who made you the right, job? Who got you out of the hospital? Who helped you win your court case? Yeah. Amen. 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 Whoever been sick like I've been sick, I know it wasn't me. Amen. Amen, amen. It's a beautiful thing, amen. Sunday school class, it talked about the song of Moses, amen, and how important those songs were for them to remember what they had been through. So these young kids are singing, but one day, one day, one day, one day, every one of them words they have been singing going to come back to their remembrance, amen. It's a beautiful thing. To get in the choir at a young age. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to get Amen. some songs embedded yes. in your heart. Amen. 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 And, and it's like a tree carving into, you know, I used to put them love notes on them trees. God wants to put a love note in your heart. Amen. Amen. The same way. So thank you, kids. You're doing a great job. Amen. Praise the Lord. Great job. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to um, reiterate what you all see on the TV screen here about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And if you all um, have seen, I have put a uh, balloon breast cancer awareness ribbon out in the hallway for uh, just to remember those that have either transitioned um, because of breast cancer or even for those that have survived um, having breast cancer. So if you would like to honor those um, that had breast cancer for this month, I am asking you all to either bring a picture or something just to honor them. I put my aunt's picture out there because she passed away early this year. So I'm just asking everyone to, um, if you would like to just bring a picture or just something to honor those that have either transitioned or those that are still living here with us uh, for this for breast cancer awareness. Thank you. 
Amen. Y'all forgive him. Amen. But he loved his papa. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and Sunday school was so good. Amen. The, the song seemed more important. Amen. Most of these young kids wasn't in, in Sunday school. But if you would have been, you would have found out that the Sunday school lesson was about the song of Moses. And it talked about how important songs are in what we do. Right. And it should be embedded in our hearts. And, and you know, Robert, when, when I was in the choir, he'd always talk about listen to the words. Listen to the words. I remember that, Robert. <laughs> because words have meaning. Yeah. And I was just so thrilled to listen to those young kids sing. Amen. And one of the reasons, because I'm a cancer survivor. Amen. I almost died. I almost missed all my babies. And I got quite a few babies right now, Bobby. <laughs> Amen. But I just give God praise. Don't take nothing for granted. Amen. Don't take life for granted, please. It can be gone, woof. And all you got is a bunch of I wish. I wish. Don't be an I wisher. Be a doer. At this time, we going to bring on the preacher. Amen. And I'm just giving you little nuggets. Amen. He, he going to give you a full course meal. Amen. Now, those are just some appetizers. Amen. Who already eat some word? Let's give this man a hand if you're ready to eat some word. Amen. Would you stand, please? And raise your right hand. I present to you Reverend Stewart who's going to bring our word today. Amen. 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 Give him a hand. Amen. And he's my friend. Amen. Give him some depth. Y'all right. know he's going to flip me over this time. Yeah. How y'all doing today? Oh, how y'all doing today? God is an awesome God. People always ask me, how you doing? I say, I'm doing awesome. Amen. That's my word for now. Uh, from now on. I'm doing awesome. Right. I explain to people that all my bad days are good days. Yes, and all my good days are awesome days. Because yeah. there could be a time where you cannot, and you do not, and you feel not anything. Amen. Because you be on the other side of the world. Amen. But God. God seen it fit for us to be able to be here one more time. Amen. And because he seen fit to let us be here one more time. Right. It is my pleasure, it is my honor to stand before you and tell you that God is good. And tell you that God is awesome. He, his name is the only name that you cannot put no limits on describing. I think it's best when a man said that and said, who, uh, when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? He said, I am yeah. that I am. Yeah. That sums it all up. He's up everything that you need. Right. Yeah. From bottom to the top, from the east to the west. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be long with you, but I'm going to let God do what he has to do. Yeah. If you don't mind, we're going to open up to John, the ninth chapter. All right. We're going to look at a few verses. And if you can stand, we ask that you to stand for the reading of the word, God's word. Amen. If you can't stand, God knows your heart. It's not for me to judge, but for him. All right. Used to be a time I could stand way back and read these words, but <laughs> praise God. Anyhow. Thank God for the glasses. Thank God people don't like going to doctors and stuff, but God put them there for a reason. That we might do things like this. <laughs> John 9 chapter, we're going to start at the 6th verse. It says, When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay yeah. of the spittle yeah. and applied the clay to the blind man's eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Shalom which is translated sent. So he went away and washed and came back seen. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously saw him as a beggar 
was saying, is not this the one who used to sit and beg? Right. See, people can remember you when you beg and you die. Right. Right. People got to have to remember who you are. Yeah. But then when God elevates you, then they want to ask questions, well, hey, are you this or are you that? But it's very funny that nobody say some good things about you when you go from the bottom to the top. Yeah. They show the top when you go from the top and head back down to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. It said, others were saying, this is he. Still others were saying, no, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the one. So they were saying to him, how then were your eyes opened? He answered, the man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Shalom and wash so I went away and washed, and I received my sight. Thus he ended reading of God's word. I like to pin for a little subject, if you will. Do you see him? Do you see him? Father God, we come thank you for what you have done for us, Father God. Thank you for being an awesome God and a God that loves us so much that despite our things that we have done, our sins, you still afford us and allowed us to be here one more time. And we just want to say thank you, Father God. So, Father, thank you for using a vessel like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A person who has been through trials and tribulations and went through the fire, but yet I can still say, you're real in my life. Thank you for allowing me to stand here today and proclaim your uncompromised word. Yes, Father, thank you for allowing me to be able to study. Thank you for giving me this word time ago, Father God, that I might stand today and say what an awesome God you is. I ask, Father God, that you allow me to decrease as you increase. Father, I also ask that you watch over our pastor as he's on the highways and byways. Father God, give him and, and, and his sister before traveling grace, Father God, that they might make it to their destination and make it back safely. In your daughter and son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Preach the word. Now, y'all know uh, Brother Stu got a habit of uh, giving y'all some information. Do you? Praise the Lord. Well, the information I had required was that a person's attention especially in a setting like this, is only good for around about 30, 25 or 30 minutes, sometimes 35. So I have been given a charge today. All right. And my charge today that God has given me is to speak to the youth. Yes, sir. When I do mean youth, I mean youth as age below 18. Some folks say 19. Also, the youth in spirit who just became believers in Christ. Amen. That you may grow into the fullness and knowledge of how good God is. All right. A lot of times we pretend that we know how good God is. Amen. And then as soon as things start to happen, we start to doubt. Yeah. But when I was growing up, my mother... And Father believed in what the Bible says. Amen. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Yes, sir. That when they run into all these different things, when they call themselves grown, yes. they should not stumble. That even though if they fade away, yeah, yeah, yeah. they should only come back. Come back. Yes, so I remember yeah. my daddy making me eat some eggs. And I like eggs, but these eggs was a little runny. And it was something about that white yolk. The yolk was okay, but that white part of the egg, that soon as that slime and stuff hit my throat, I had to go regurgitate. Yeah. And as soon as I did that, because he was a cook, as soon as I ran to the bathroom regurgitating, you heard it? Come on back here, boy. Come on back here. By the time I got through, he had some more eggs, cooked and ready for me again. If I regret it, he went, go to the bathroom, come right back. The eggs is back there waiting on me again. Right. Today, I love eggs. <laughs> I still want to eat them with the, with the white part running, but I eat them with the yolk running. Right. Come to find out, I was allergic to eggs. 
But what my daddy was instilling in me was, there might come a time where we might not have nothing to eat but eggs. Come on. Uh, and the Bible tells us, do not call anything that I have created That's right. unclean. That's right. That's right. Now, some people tell you, the Muslim will tell you, well, you're not supposed to eat pork. Well, if I'm not mistaken, my Bible tells me that God created that. Amen. Now, what they do and how they serve God is their business. Amen. Now, you have a new, the new black Israelites that come up there and tell you, oh, I'm not going to eat this and I'm not going to eat that. And some will even tell you that when, bought, when, the, when God told the disciple, get down, Peter, uh, kill, slay, and eat, he was talking about the person Amen. that do not call anything I have created as in the person. Right. Unclean. Because of simple fact that we can also, even though it might be a little dirty, we can also get cleaned up. All right. I'm going to tell you that when God said nothing I yeah. created, yeah. he meant nothing. Amen. There might become a time, and the Bible tells us in Revelation, it says that there'll come a time where men become lovers of men and women become lovers of women, and all these different things come in, and then some is going to receive the mark of the devil. Well, we we living in perilous times right now when we don't know when that mark might come. But when that mark comes, it's going to be at the point where if you don't get this mark or get this stamp, you can't get paid. You can't buy no groceries. You can't do nothing unless you scan yourself. You can watch some TV shows now that they show you that they got little barcodes on them and stuff. If you watched um, Black Panther, they had the little barcode they mob. I am from Wakanda. But think about it is, there's going to be a stamp that's put on us. Yeah. And it's going to be whether we be able to live or die. Yeah. That's going to be our choice. Right. So when I first talked to you two sermons ago, right. I talked to you about the wind. Because God speaks to us through the wind and the rain. Yeah. And, all stuff. and even Jesus stood up and told the storm to be still and to know that I am God. Yeah. The prophet Elijah he didn't die. He didn't taste death. He was caught up in a whirlwind and carried away. And then those other prophets spoke to Moses. I mean, as God spoke to Moses, spoke to Moses too, a whirlwind. All right. And then the last thing I talked to you about, I talked to you about the water. Yeah. And the beautiful yeah. things that was in the water. I talked to you about the the uh, the, 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 uh, the seahorses and how the seahorses has the um the origin well if you eat them it can heal and it can uh, help heal arthritis and asthma and different things and the reason why I was telling you these things and I was telling you about the jellyfish and everything the reason why I was telling you things is because God created these things yes. yeah. they didn't just happen God created these things so I got a few more slides for you today and hopefully we can get them brought up to you. But in these slides, it's just showing you the goodness of God. Because see, when we was growing up, when he was a baby, they would put things on our plate. You have a little peas, a little carrot, smushed up, a little meat and everything. Because back then, we was made to eat them. I don't like no peas. But you're going to sit there until you, you eat their food. And sometimes, the kids would stay there and they fall asleep right there in their plate. But they could not leave until they ate their food. Nowadays, <coughs> kids would tell their parents, I don't want to eat it. And then the parents would go to Jack in the Box, McDonald's, yep. Pizza Hut, yep. and feed their kids. Without realizing that you're missing two points. Number one, they tell you what you what they ain't going to do, right. which was a no-no when I grew up. Right. Number two, you feed them stuff that's not healthy for their bodies. It's a temporary food to get you to you get home and get you a good square meal. Yeah. So my Bible tells me in Psalms the 24th chapter, it says the earth is the Lord and all that contains it, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established upon the rivers. Everything belongs to God. Genesis tells us in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and it was without form. And God 
made the animals, and he pulled back the water and became land. And all these things was created because of God. Yeah. So in my first picture, what they brought up was earthworms. Okay. Those are nasty looking rascals for those who don't go fishing. Yeah. Right, right. For those who don't go fishing, them some nasty looking rascals. But for us who fish, oh boy, it brings joy. <laughs> for a simple fact that earthworms we used to fish with. But let me give you a little something about the little bit of earthworm. And you're going to see it. I might not eat them. The thing about it is, the reason why I'm giving you these things is because there might come a time. Well, this is going to come a time. These people who do movies things and all this stuff tells you, it's gonna become a time where lots of food gonna come extinct. Nuclear warfare, whatever goes on, everything gonna be still gonna know how to survive. Yeah. Me and my boys, we'll get out there and we're gonna survive because we know what to eat, what not to eat. But suppose it come a time where you don't know what to eat. Yeah. Suppose you out there in that area where everything is destroyed but what's in the ground, but yet you don't know what to eat. Right. It used to be a show called Fear Factor where they ate all these exotic things. Right. And yeah. people like, uh, they want to regurgitate up and everything. But they were really showing you these things are really eaten in exotic places, like in China and different other places like that. But over here, because we look at them, because our mind has said that, oh, that looks nasty, we will not eat it. But the earthworm, they are high in protein and have levels of iron. And of amino acid which help break down food and repair the body tissue. Yeah, yeah. Those same things that the earthworms. Yeah, you might not want to eat them now. Yeah. But suppose it came a time when you had no choice but to eat that. Yeah. What would you do? They also contain copper, <laughs> magnesium, and zinc. And a source of calcium. Yeah. Now let me make that come to fruitation to you. How many of y'all had COVID? Now think I had twice. For those who had COVID, what did a doctor recommend you to have? What vitamins did he recommend you take? Zinc, zinc, zinc calcium, magnesium, copper. All these same things, the same thing that help you fight off COVID. God made it already for you. It's already there. Everything that you need, God has already created. All you gotta do is say, my people fail for the lack of knowledge because they're gonna get in and read for themselves. Amen. Greens, mustard greens, collard greens, spinach. We didn't like the way it looked. I'm not eating that. But guess what? It, it helps fight off cancer. Yeah. Women, it helps fight off ovarian cancer and breast cancer. Right. But yet, we don't know that because we don't want to eat that kind of stuff. One more thing. Dandelions. How many of y'all know about dandelion? Dandelion is a flower. Kids, y'all see them flowers right there? Ain't they pretty? Do y'all know what these flowers do? Well, no, okay, since nobody won't talk to me, I talk to you. Go ahead. In dandelion, some people who believe in herbs know about the dandelion tea. For those who eat everybody. The kids, since y'all want to eat everything, put everything in your mouth, put one of those in your mouth and eat that. Guess what? The leaves are used to stimulate the appetite and help digestion. Yeah. Down flowers has antioxidant properties. They may also help improve the immune system. Herbalists use the root of the dandelion to detoxify the liver and the dog gutter. And for those folks who like to drink and stuff, they're living in their dog litter and lead, helps, um, it helps kidneys function. Okay. That's what the downlines do. Thank you. But yet, we don't want to eat that because it does not look appetizing. Or, oh, I'm not going to eat those things. But guess what? God created those things for you. Okay, maybe I don't want to go through that either. So, Thank you. Let, 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 let me come to you a different way. In our Bible, it tells us that there's going to come a time 
Well, we got to choose from right and wrong. There's going to come a time we're going to be able to choose whether we're going to be for God or for Satan. You're right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Everybody got to make a choice because the Bible tells us that every knee, yeah, it's Philippians 2, 9, 10, is going to bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Buddhists got to do it. The Catholics got to do it. The Latter-day Saints got to do it. The Baptists, the, the Protestants, everybody going to have to bow. It's going to come a time where we need to know who we for. I represent my team all the time, Pittsburgh. I love him. But when it comes to me loving him more than I love God, no. Me loving him more than I love my job, no. Me loving him more than I love my family, no. Because I understand that they ain't going to help me. All right. But I know what God has done for me. Yes, when I needed my life be paid. Pittsburgh still ain't came nowhere close to me. <laughs> when in my life, getting my life bill paid. When I was hungry, Pittsburgh still ain't tried to feed me not one turkey or nothing. Oh, yeah. So right. as we go into the introduction, so I know that some of you see the illustration I have been showing and probably say, I wouldn't eat that or I wouldn't touch that. But what would you do to save your life? The movie. Uh, the book of Eli was a perfect example. First thing they showed him when he killed him was a cat. And it wasn't no regular, a beautiful cat. It was an old major cat. But the cat had to die because he had to eat it. When he got to eat, I think I'm not mistaken, they just his fingers at the same time. It all depends on what you see. It says, never say what you want to do. If your life depended on it. Come on now. Children, in school, people are going to offer you some things. Amen. People are going to put some things in front of you and dare you to do this and to dare you to do that. But I'm telling you kids that remember what your parents had taught you. People who do believers in Christ remember what God has taught you. In the first five verses, the question was asked, about the man who was blind from birth. Yeah. Who sinned, the mother or the father? Amen. And what they was talking about was generational curses. Right. How many of y'all know that so many, so many kids right here nowadays is having a problem because things what we did? Amen. Right. Perfect right. example. You got a person with um, mom and father both smoke crack and did drugs. Mm -hmm. The baby come out with Down syndrome or come out with defects and whatever. It's because of what the mother or the father did. Mm -hmm. See, back in them days, they really believed that somebody had to sin, and we need to correct that action. But then now, we understand that sometimes, as the Bible says, sometimes things happen that God might get the greater good of it. God healed a couple of times that neither was the mother or the father, but that the, the Son of God may be glorified. Amen. Now, you can see that in this uh, scriptures, it talks about this blind man. Amen. And the first point will make it, can you see? Amen. Verses 6 and 7. When he, had, when he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied it, uh, applied the clay to his eyes, and said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is, he also went away and washed and became sin. Now, I don't know about y'all, but my mama had a, a habit when something was on the side of my face, she would spit on her finger, yeah. and rub it. I said, oh, that's nasty. Yeah. 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 Why she doing that? Then we, you know, when we got it over, we try to pull away, and shit, get back here, boy, whatever, and, and wipe that spit and put that spit on that and, 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 and clean it and everything. Well, how many of you, have anybody ever had a cat that you know that if you wanted to give it some medicine, what you do? You throw it on his paws and it, it lick the, lick the medicine off his paws. A dog, if he get wounded, what he do? He lick his wounds. The reason why is for the simple fact that in that spit, there's healing properties off inside. So Jesus did something that shocked the world. Yeah. Well, now, if you don't mind, 
I think I have a picture of um, some clay. Can you, um, yeah, some clay. In the country, we call that red clay. Now, how many of y'all know about that red clay? I know cuz you know about red clay. I know uh, Real Nation, Sister Nation know about red clay, but the younger people don't know nothing about red clay, do you? Well, let me explain something to you. You remember y'all little kids and our kids eat dirt? And I said, stop eating that dirt. Well, guess what? What's nothing wrong with eating that dirt? Red clay. Let me give you the health benefits of red clay. You're going to pass out when you see this good. Because I almost passed out. But I know some people eat red clay. The benefits, some of the benefits of red clay, it helps get rid of toxins in your GI's tract. It helps to boost your immune system. It may help to prevent cancer. Yeah. It kills a bunch of types of viruses. All right. And for some of y'all who have thyroid problems, it improves your thyroid functions. Yeah. That's just some of the things that red clay do. You go to Louisiana, some places in Louisiana, you can, they already have red clay packaging. and you can eat it. So if your kids eat some dirt, don't always just beat them like that unless you know it's all them. But it's some, it's some good factors in everything that God has put on earth for us. Now, as I gave you those little lessons, I got to give you a lesson by the man who created those things. See, I gave you the part about can you see? See, Jesus spit on the ground and made clay and rubbed it. On the, and rubbed it on the ground in, in the dirt and made it on clay. That Jesus can't open your eyes, but it's up to you to see him. Right. In school, teachers will tell you all the wonderful things about the world, but they won't tell you who made the world. All right. In elementary, I love science and I love health. And they told us about the and when it came to hell, they told us about the dermis and the epidermis and all these different kind yeah. of things. And when they told us about the earth, they told us about the uh, mantle and, and the core and all yeah. these different other parts and the crust of the earth. But they never told us who made those. You're right. right. Amen. And some said that it was made by the Big Bang and everything else. But I'm here to tell you that God made all of that. Yeah. So since they won't tell you, and they say they got to separate church from state and all this stuff, I'm here to tell you that God is real. Yes, and that he has made everything for us. Now, as he, God, did that with, the, with our Jesus, what caused that man to see? Yeah. It was his faith. Yeah. Amen. Because to let someone spit mm. and mix it with dirt yeah. and then rub their eyes with it, that's a great, and put it on your face, that's yeah, a great yeah, yeah. feat. Yeah. If somebody spit at me, we're going to have to fight. Yeah. 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 Mama yeah. did that spit and she want to touch me, I was backing up. And yeah. Even yeah. in the day, she come back and nah, come on, come on, come on, come on, I use my own spit. But yeah. what yeah. I'm saying is, people thought that was nasty. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to some place now and you try to do that, you're going to get a fight. Yeah. Because it's not customary for someone to do that. That's right. That's like Jesus. Sometimes now in the days, it's not customary for you to pray out in public. Yeah. Why? Because people would talk about you. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that we need to go back into the old ways. We was in school praying. Yeah. But now look what's happening. Yeah. We walk we're around acting like we're scared, scared to, to pray because we're worried about who feelings yeah. that you're going to hurt. Yeah. Oh, you in, you in part of I feel like if you're praying that it's going to bother me, so I don't want you praying around me. So, matter of fact, I'm going to go call the police on you and I'm going to do these kind of things. There's come a time where Christians want to stand up and be Christians. Amen. Amen. Stop calling ourselves Christians and do the work of a Christian. Yeah. A lot of times we tell them we love Jesus, but then as soon as we get to the church, we you walk by and person say, Help me, and we'll bypass him. Amen. And at the same time, we by passing them trying to get to church. Yeah. Our kids are in the car yeah. watching what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the kids get older and start driving, either they're going to run, run over that person or they're going to bypass it. Yeah. Now I realize sometimes God put people in your way that yeah. you might help them that he might get the glory. Yeah. You might be the only person that they might see Christ through. Yeah. They might never see Christ. 
or never heard about Christ, but then God used you at that time to say something. Yeah. And we miss our opportunity because we're trying to do trying to be the good Christian, yeah. but not being the Christian. Right. Right. So Jesus was being the good shepherd. The good shepherd. And the good shepherd takes care of his flock. So Jesus fell on the ground, mixed it up and made mud, and opened that man's eyes. Yeah. Now it used to be a show cut said that um uh, your eyes was wide open. Yeah. But in reality, Sometimes we see things, but we don't see things. Yeah. Right. Sometimes our eyes play tricks on us because That's of the super fact that yeah. we true. can't believe what we have seen. Yeah. God gives us miracles every day. Yeah. He takes care of us every day. Yeah. He feeds us every day. Yeah. But how many times we tell him, thank you? Yeah. How many times we see the wonders of what God do? Hurricanes go through and tap everything, but then you see a baby might be thrown out in the streets, but yet survive. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see a splinter that's going straight through a piece of steel. Yeah. Yeah. There's stuff that's unheard of. God had let you see what his power is. Yeah. Now, on the second part, it says, who do you see? When you get your healing, you sit. Who do you see? Do you see God? Or do you see the doctors? All right. When you tell the doctors, thank you for healing me, who gave the doctors the power to heal you? Who gave the doctors the knowledge to heal you? Right, right. It says that, and then when you do something, God bless you, and God bring you up from being out there and you homeless or out on the streets and bring you up where you got a beautiful life and God is blessing you and you said it blessing others, people ain't going to believe that was you. Why? Because you're serving God and you're not giving them recognition. That's what people want today is recognition of what they helped you do. Yeah, I needed my light bill paid. And I asked you for a 10 or 15 dollars. Or yet you came by and helped me pay my light bill. And I said thank you. But then as I got my bill paid and God elevated me up, then other people see what wasn't that that boy right there who lights was barely cut on. He was always begging to get his lights cut on. This is that. Now he's in the mansion. Yeah, come on now. Now he's driving the Cadillac. Right, 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 right. Now he's driving a nice truck. Right. Yeah. But then he had a little rabbit Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. yeah. He had a little rabbit Volkswagen Rabbit. Well, he driving a little Pinto. But yeah. what God has done for me, I'm not ashamed to tell people that, that God did this. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to open my eyes and say, look at what God has done for me. Yeah. A lot of times we keep our eyes closed because we're close to the fact that knowledge that God is awesome. He awesome. Yeah. Our mind are closed, our eyes are closed because God is great. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. acknowledge yeah. the fact of who God really is, yeah. we're blaming and say somebody else did it. Yeah. Yeah. It says, do you see what the world is or what it could be if it served God? God gives you everything you need yeah. to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And verse 8 says, Therefore the neighbors and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, Is not this one who was used to sit and beg? Yeah. Sound like to me, you know, they shocked because of what he's doing, but I, I serve a God that can do anything. Yeah. It says, Others were saying, This is he still. Others were saying, No. But he is like him. He keeps saying, I am the one. Right, right, right. That person recognized that God did it. Yeah. Yeah. The kids just saying something. God did it. God did it. God did it. Right. That's what we need to be saying. The same song. God did it. God did it. Like pain. God did it. Car. God did it. House. God did it. God did everything that I need. Bible said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes, he did. Open your eyes and see who God really is and what he can do in your life. Thank you, Lord. I'm here to tell you that God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. I keep saying that word awesome because of a simple fact my grandbaby got me doing it. My grandbaby tell you, Papa is awesome. Then he sit there and say, Cam is awesome. And then uh, my wife get mad, but he had a Pittsburgh Steelers is awesome. I said, yeah, you're right, grandson. But at 
as he says it, yeah, yeah. it makes me think, am I really awesome? All right, all right. Yeah. Do I live up to the fact that my grandbaby see me as an awesome person? Yeah. So if he see me as an awesome person, that means I can do awesome things yeah. for him. Yeah. I have to let him see me eat the foods that he need to eat. I had to see, let him see me go to church. Yeah. I had to let him see me praising God. Yeah. I had to let him see me doing all these things, helping others and everything else. That not only is I, I'll be awesome, but he might be awesome when he grow up. Yeah. So how many of y'all know the kids be riding around and they see you gossiping and talking about somebody? Come on now. See you cursing somebody out. Yeah. They got some things that, that uh, jumped up on my little Facebook thing, said this little kid was repeating. What the parents said. Right, 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 right. And what the kid was saying was nothing nice. Yeah. But because he hanging around the mother and the father, he's doing only what they showed him. Yeah. So we have to understand that we got to be diligent in doing what we're supposed to do in the eyesight, not only of God, but the kids who's watching us. Because they and, and when they're small like that, they might understand that they know God, but they really don't know God. Amen. Because they haven't been through some things. Amen. They haven't been laid off of work. Yeah. And now know how they're going to pay their bills. Yeah. They have not been to the point where I got a job, but yet the ends don't meet the needs. Yeah. And I got to figure out what I'm going to pay first to make sure I got this yeah. or that. Yeah. Or they have not been to the point where mom and daddy had to do some things that was, uh, wasn't good to do that they might be able to eat or have clothes on their back. Or they have not been to the situation to understand that even though it looks like it's cloudy outside, the sun is still shining. Yeah. So it brings me to my third point. Do you see him? The beggar said, he also said, the man who was called Jesus right, right. made clay. Uh -huh. yeah. And then the one thing I like about it, he said, and anointed my eyes. Yes, he did. Yes. And said to me, go to Shalom and wash. So I went away and washed. Now that word away means quickly. Yeah. He did exactly what Jesus said, do right then and now. Yeah. He did not hesitate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did not take a hesitation <laughs> moment and say, well, I should, well, I really should go to that school. Yeah. Or, or, or since he spit in my face, this man spit in my face, he went right then and there Thank you. and washed and received the sight. Praise God. Now, some things happening now. One thing happened was the man was obedient. He was obedient to God's word. The second thing that happened was he let his pride sit down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he had to drop his pride in order to let somebody spit and rub your eyes. And then the third thing happened was he received the blessing. He received his sight. Why? Because he was obedient and because he let his pride drop down and became humble. Humble to God. Yeah. Not to man, yeah. Yeah. but to God. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to take it a little bit farther. He wasn't only humble to just God, but he was humble to God's man. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jesus was there. He was God and man at the same time. Yeah. 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 Now, a lot of times, our pastor will tell us to do something. Say that. I you know, prayed over you, I prayed for you night and day, night and day, night and day. And then we tell you to do something that don't seem sensible. Yeah. Well, well, so you hesitate. <laughs> and when you hesitate, then you anticipate. Yeah, right. And then when your anticipation come up, you anticipate for failure because of the simple fact you doubted God yeah. in the man. Oh, oh, oh. So why would we ask God to help us because it used to be a time God spoke directly to us. Yeah. Now he used people to speak to you. And when he used people to speak to you, you wave it away for a simple fact. You don't want to believe that God took someone else to see, to touch you. But there was a man, three men, matter of fact, that came and proclaimed that Jesus was the king. Yeah. The little man, the little baby was in a cradle, yeah. wrapped in swaddling 
clothing. clothing. Yeah. Yeah. And all kind of animals stood around him. Yeah. And the animals were proclaiming that Jesus is the king. Yeah. The birds, when they take flight, they proclaiming that Jesus is the king. When the cows give milk, All right. they're proclaiming <laughs> that Jesus is the king. All right. When the eagle soar so way up in the air yeah. Yeah. and look down with supervision yeah. and see that rat come across there or that rabbit come across there yeah. and yeah. swoop down and grab it, yeah. he's proclaiming that Jesus is the king. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't get enough to y'all. Right. Maybe, maybe when a woman is getting ready to have birth. Yeah. And she's implanted by a seed. Yeah. And as that seed grows inside of her, well, well, it starts to move. Yeah. And as it starts moving, it starts living inside you. Yeah. And as that seed starts living inside you, something immaculate happens. It kicks. And when it kicks, it lets you know that something is inside you. Yeah. That's what the Holy Spirit do. When it comes inside you and the word is, that seed is planted inside you, it starts to live inside yeah. you. It starts to move and breathe inside yeah. you. And then all of a sudden you get a boo! Yeah. And you kick. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus did the same thing. Yeah. And as he kicked, Thank you, Lord. he broke me in. Yeah. And at the age of 13, children, understand yeah. the age of 13, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. You're never too young to proclaim the word of God. Jesus did miraculous things. A woman just touched him of his garment and she was made whole. God did a wonderful thing where he split the Red Sea. Jesus did a wonderful thing where he said, the 5,000 with two fish. Yeah. Five loaves of bread. Thank you, Lord. And then he's such an awesome God that he backed on and fed 4,000 more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's such an awesome God that he turned water into wine. Yeah, yeah. He's such an awesome God yeah. that in the midst of everything that was going on, yeah. he seen a man on the side begging at the pool oh. of a desert. Yeah. And he said, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, save me. And Jesus saved him. He says, pick up your bed and walk. Today can be your day that you pick up your bed and walk. And then somebody said, is that the carpenter's son? Is that Mary's little boy? Is that the one who decided that he was going to walk on water? Yeah. Is that the one who sat there and said, Peace be still? Yeah. Jesus. 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 Well, can you see him? If you can't see him, he was right there with you when you was going through your stuff late at night. Man. When the husband wasn't acting right, or when your wife wasn't acting right, when them kids were just being disrespectful, he was right there waiting for you to invite him in. But I'm going to tell you something about this Jesus. Over 2,000 years, y'all know what he was doing. But over 20 some years ago, he caught me. When I was overseas in England, riding motorcycles and having wrecks on motorcycles yeah. and while I was doing unsavory things, yeah. he touched me. Yeah. And he told me, you know you wasn't brought up that way. Yeah. You know that you're supposed to serve me and not man. Yeah. He touched me yeah. and kept me for killing myself. Uh -huh. While I was riding on a motorcycle, it was yeah. raining, and someone pulled out in front of me. Yeah. I had to lay the motorcycle down. Yeah. And see, I didn't see God then. Yeah. But when I laid the motorcycle down, I slid yeah. and hit the back tire. Yeah. And when I hit the back tire, my body went up under the car. Yeah. And the policeman said, if you had to hit the front tire, step in there, the back tire would roll over you. Thank you, Jesus. I see what you're doing for yeah. me now. And because I see, I'm here to tell you that on the while he was going up uh, the Gotham's Hill, yeah. they ripped him 
and beat him yes. right before he did that. That was on a Thursday night. Yeah. They spit on him. Yeah. Just like he spit on them to heal them, yeah. they're spitting what for the same reason. Yeah. Yeah. They beat him all night long. Yeah. Yeah. They talked about him. Yeah. They persecuted him. Yeah. But he still said, Father, send me. Yeah. I go. Yeah. He walked up to God to see him and he gave his right hand. Yeah. And he gave his left hand. Yeah. And they ripped his feet. Yeah. And he said, and if I be lifted up, yeah. I'll draw all yeah. men yeah. unto me. Yeah. Yeah. He said, but think about it, when they lifted him up, yeah. Yeah. he still said, oh, y'all done messed up now. Y'all yeah. yeah. allowed me to be glorified. Yeah. Everybody going to pay attention to, guess what? Yeah. You can't take my life, but I give it to you. Yeah. And since I would give it to you, I'm giving it to you for all y'all who felt like you did something wrong, but God said, I forgive you. Yeah. He said, forgive them, for they know not what yeah. they do. Right, right, and right. once he gave up his body, they took him down. Mm -hmm. They buried him. Yeah. And as they buried him in that tomb, yeah. he went down in the earth right there where them the, the lava and right there where the, the different kind of earth that and the worms and all that stuff. He went down there and preached to the captives yeah. and said, I am the one. Yeah. I am that I am the one. Yeah. And on that third day morning, yeah. early, early the third day morning, he got up with all power oh, and heaven and earth in his hand. My best day to you is this here. Open your eyes yeah. so you can see him. Yeah. Open your eyes and understand that God is awesome. Yeah. My message to you is God ain't playing. He's not playing at all. That's right. A lot of times people think that because he ain't came yet, that he's not coming. Yeah. But he said this is going to be the beginning of sorrow. Yeah. The reason why I showed you these things because he said it's going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Before it get better, he said it's going to get worse. Yeah. And when it get worse, what you going to do? All right. Call him. What you going to do when a man tell you that if you don't take this stand, you can't eat? Yeah. How are you going to survive if you don't know who God really is? Yeah. How are you going to survive when you don't know what he put on the earth for you. Yeah. The people got right. God said he made us as kings and queens. Yeah. But if you don't understand who your royalty is and that you are royalty, he said we are royalty Amen. because we are heirs to the throne of God. But yet if you don't act like you are royalty, how are they going to treat you like you are royalty? Amen. So, open your eyes and see if you can see him. If he says for this reason also God has highly exalted him and bestowed him on the name which is above every name. Yeah. So that at the name of Jesus, yeah. every yeah. knee yeah. will bow. Yeah. For those who are in heaven, yeah. on earth, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. under the earth. Yeah. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah. As I get ready to go, I want to thank you for at least listening to me. Amen. But I want you to understand that he said every tongue. Yeah. Snakes got tongues. Yeah. Lizards got tongues. Yeah. Cows got tongues. Horses got tongues. Yeah. They don't have to confess that he's God. Yeah. Not just you, but everything. Yeah. And if we don't start opening our eyes right now, we're going to be set up for a failure. So I'm going to tell you that God is real. He's awesome. And he is the great I am. Thank you.
lost their pastor. Sad situation over there, but we was there to offer them a bench that we uh, ordered for the family. And they gave us a chance to speak. My wife was there, Bruce Washington's wife was there. But it was a sad situation. Yeah. Sad situation.
And this is what really got me on this man, Rob. He said, you are, you are a real brother. Amen. Love your man. Amen. Make that sound. Awesome. That's what he said. Boy, that just made me feel so good. Amen. For a pastor like that. Amen. To say that about me. Amen. And, you know, to honor him on today. So it's just best for us to live a good life. Yeah. Live a life where people can say great things about you. Rather than to say, what? That's all they got said. Fools, what? But you ought to live a life where people will have some great things to say. Live a legacy. Yeah, amen. Amen. So I'm just, I'm happy today and I'm sad. Yeah. Because we uh, what we had to do today. Amen. And I missed most of the sermon. But I thank God for the Mom Gilead Church. Amen. I want you to know that I really appreciate Mom Gilead. Sometimes we don't know what we got until you go Amen. see other folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And everybody running around there want to be the pastor. Mm. You know, and, it, and everybody is, <laughs> man, it's just, you know, it's no peace there. Mm -hmm. And that's, we don't want that here. Amen. Amen. We Amen. might be smaller, but I want you to know that we, we love one another. That's right. We love one another. That's right. Amen. 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 I was getting ready to iron my pants this morning. Bond said, Pastor, give me them pants. <laughs> she ironed. That's right, my pastor. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm hungry, uh, Erica gonna go get me something to eat. Yeah. 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 You know what right. I'm you know, I, I got some people. I just go all the way around. Yeah, we love oh, oh, Tasha, she's crazy about me. Yeah. I'm her dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We 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 want to be lovable, lovable to everybody and be able to help Amen. one another. Amen. We got another great man here, brother, brother Robert. You know, uh, the sign man has not been. Taking care of the sign. Yeah. Guess who said they're gonna take care of the sign? Amen. Brother Rock. Amen. And the sign has been changed. Thank you. you know, he just he's a great brother. Yeah. We got some great people here. Amen. And I thank God for all of you all. Amen. And we just need to love one another a little bit more, y'all. Okay? Love a little bit more, man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody but us. Yeah. Just love a little bit more, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, every now and then, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, love on the choir members, Amen. the drummer, and, the, and, and David. Let yeah. them know that they are loved. Because it's too late when, yeah. when they lay it across that. Amen. 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 I had a chance to witness that today, man. You know, uh, it's a sad situation. Yeah. Amen. But why we got one another? Yes, right. Boy, look here. We ought to be getting down. Yeah. Right. Come on, let's get down. Just loving on one another, man. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm sorry, Sister Nation and Rev Nation, but I just had to get that out. Yeah. I had to get that out. I, you know, sometimes I see stuff I ain't never seen before. Man. Yeah. So I'm just letting you know that uh, if any bitch ain't got love in them, find out what's wrong with them. Yeah. Don't know them all. Find out man, what is wrong with you. Man. You know what I'm saying? We don't know what's wrong with you, man. Why you ain't got no love? Why you ain't smiling? Why you don't hug? That's not Christ, man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We want to serve the Lord until we die. Amen. 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 All right, Chad, what we got? We have um, Sister Nation, who's coming today, church family, Facebook family. We have Sister Nation who's coming today asking for prayer, but she also has a statement, and we have Reverend Nation who's standing to support her. Okay. Amen. Amen. Give me all and glory to the Lord our God. Yes, ma'am. I uh, was asking for prayer for me. I went to my doctor, prayed for my knee. And I don't got any injection on it, but I went to have my pacemaker checked. Last Tuesday, and the doctor told me, he's a patient, this 
say your pacemaker is working at 95%. It's wonderful. You say you are good for another five years.
But, you know, wait, wait I want y'all to start laughing, Mark. You need to laugh, Mark, man. You know what I'm saying? Let all that stuff go. When you come here, that's why you need to come here and say, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And his courts with praise. They say, come in here, bless in his name. If you can't say no, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. He said, what, what, what we fail to realize that when we were youngsters or when we first started going to church, the older or the seasoned ladies, they would always rock around to my, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Jesus. That's where it was, man, you know what I'm saying? So what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Can, I, you know, say, can we get out of here together and all of us start just saying hallelujah Jesus? Can I get everybody to stand? Can I get everybody to stand? It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank God. Blessed be the name of the Lord.